Friday, 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 Friday. I think we got everything going. Push the right buttons, do the right things. All sorts of good stuff will happen. Oh, so many of you in the chat. Let's have a good finally Friday. We're going to start that in just a few seconds. Finally, Friday is being brought to you this week by Major Spoilers VIP and Patreon members from around the world. You can show your support and you can really help us out a great deal when you become a $5 member at patreon.com slash major spoilers. Happy November 1st. Happy Day of the Dead. Happy post Halloween. I hope you got your fill of all the candy and all of the trick-or-treaters. And I hope you had a great evening and you're ready to move into the weekend just like the weekend deserves. Let's move this over, which way? This way, right? Just there, a little bit. Just a little bit, just for you. I am Steven Schleicher from Majorspoilers.com. Thank you so much for checking us out this week. Halloween for us this year was very, very different than years past. Uh, last year, the oldest decided that he was no longer going to participate in any kind of Halloweening. So he he uh, bowed out early last year. This year, like a month ago, at the beginning of October, the youngest, who's now eight, decided he didn't want anything to do with the Halloween this year. That he did all he wanted to do was hand out candy. So we're like, okay. Just, you know, anticipating two days before that he was going to say, oh my gosh. I want to go trick-or-treating. I want to go dressed up. And even then, he was like, nah, I kind of want to, but, you know, I really don't. And I was like, good, because you said you didn't want to go trick-or-treating, so we didn't buy you a costume. But we bought some candy. My wife was in charge of candy buying this year. And uh, she thought she bought a lot. I didn't think she bought very much. There we go. And uh, so the youngest was going to help, quote-unquote, hand out candy. Kids started rolling in right about 10 till 6, 6 p.m. I thought that was rather early. We Normally, the whistle doesn't blow until 6. I think that's, I don't know, where it is in your neighborhoods. But it's kind of an understood rule that, hey, don't send your kids out until 6 o'clock. We had some kids showing up about 10 minutes early. But these were like the little kids. These were the parents, I think, maybe taking their kids out for their first Halloween. You know, the, the two-year-olds, the three-year-olds, the ones that you're trying to be nice to, and they just reach into the candy bowl and try to take all your candy from you. But I, here's something that I, that I noticed. Our end of the city tends to attract a lot of people for whatever reason. For I, I don't know why. I think there is this um, misconception that this end of town is where all the rich people live. <laughs> And so they have the good candy. But I think it's a different reason. Years ago, we would have 100 kids in an hour, maybe 200 kids in an evening. This year, I think maybe in the two and a half hours that we had the front porch light on, I think we maybe had 50, maybe 75 kids. But it was way down. And I think part of it is, years ago, 10 years ago, all these kids were little. All the kids were little. And now that they've grown up, they've grown out of candy. They've grown out of the trick-or-treating. They've grown out of the Halloween festivities. So they're all staying home. So the number of kids out has been reduced. And I think that kind of plays out because I think I saw a report back when my kids were little and we were trying to get them into school. There was waiting lists to get into certain schools. Nowadays, there is not a waiting list to get into schools. So I'm wondering if that didn't help play a part is that kids have aged out of trick-or-treating. Uh, the last group of kids came at about 8.30, and right at 8.30, we ran out of candy completely. The last group of kids came out, and I just dumped the bowl in and said, good night, kids. They were barely off the porch before I flipped off all the lights. And I went to go and do some work. It was weird, though. The last group of kids that came up, I don't know if they were, they were a little bit older, a little bit obnoxious. They were middle school kids, I think. And I don't know if they were being... Um, sarcastic, but when I started handing out the candy, they were like, oh, you have candy. So I don't know what the other neighbors were handing out. 
I, I don't like families that hand out cans of soda. I think that's like the worst thing that you can give to a kid. Although as a group of kids were leaving our porch, one of them said she was really thirsty and she wished she had water. So maybe next year I'm going to hand out little bottles of water. Those little, what are they, four ounce bottles of water so kids can have something to drink. Also, that might be a help for the parents, too, because, you know, an hour after drinking that, the kid's going to have to go to the bathroom and that'll end that trick or treating early. Hmm. So a lot of people in the chat today. Let's see, who do we have today? We have Malone is there, and the the uh, the, the the J. Michael T. is there. Thought I saw the great NATO in, but maybe not. I see Kevin Eleven is there. Whole bunch of people in today. I hope you had a wonderful Halloween. King size candy bars. Ah, so Twitch did, wayward boy, Twitch did send you notifications for Finally Friday. The wife insists. Now, first of all, she said that she's following this channel. Maybe she doesn't have notifications turned on or something, but she insists that she doesn't get a notification when this show goes live. Uh, hand out beers for parents. There was... I mean, that runs into problems, right? Because you don't know who's really a parent. I only saw one parent in the spirit, and he was dressed as Donald Trump. Uh, but uh, the rest of the parents are really pretty kind. A few years ago, again, this was when my oldest was maybe six or seven... There were some older parents in the neighborhood, not older parents, but parents in the neighborhood that would walk around with a uh, wagon with a cooler on the back. And if they saw their parents, hey, you need a beer. Hey, you need a wine cooler. Hey, you need whatever. That's not really how they talk here, but I think that would probably also get you in trouble because you're not supposed to be drinking alcohol on the street. Public consumption of alcohol is forbidden. So that could get some people in trouble. So I probably wouldn't want to do that. And besides, if I'm going to spend money on alcohol, it's going for me, not for a bunch of other strange people whose kids are out begging for candy on a school night, although this year they didn't have school. There's a big question about why the kids didn't have school this year, but that's that's for another time. But it was a good time. I, I, I had fun. It was not so many kids that showed up that made it nice. I could sit down in between breaks. I mean, literally a few years ago, I had to park my butt next to the to the front door because every time I closed the door, there'd be another group of kids there within 10 seconds saying they're Halloweens or they're tricks or treats or gimme candy or just, you know, the littlest kids are the greatest because they're just like, they don't know what to do. And so you're like, hey, do you want to say trick or treat or happy Halloween or something like that? And then you got to tell them, open your bags and all that stuff. So it's fun. It's cute seeing the little kids run around. A lot to unbox this week. And the reason why I say unbox is because in the last week, a lot of things have been sent to the Major Spoilers HQ. And I thought I would run through some of the things that have arrived over the last, I want to say week, week and a half. First thing. If you are a Pathfinder 2.0 player, the uh, the new character guide has arrived. I want to make sure I got the microphone in the right spot. I need a wider lens, I think. Allies and Ancestries. This is this is your character creation book. It goes into all the different types of characters that you're going to find in the Pathfinder 2nd Edition. I wish I could say I've had my... Um, the Pathfinder 2.0 rule set available. But DD Brian took it and he hasn't returned it. This book's got everything. It's got goblins in it. Well, of course, Pathfinder's all about the goblins. It's got halflings. And this is pretty cool, actually. Hobgoblin, hobgoblins, lizard folk. A lot of goblins in here. Maybe I'm in the G section. Maybe I should move out. Oh, here's a lizard folk. Here's, uh, let's see, who do we have? What is this? This is fairy folk? Is that who this is? Oh, Firebrands. It's got a lot of descriptions on these. Gives you some uh, character descriptions. Gives you some notable characters. The Knights of the Last Wall. Some Hell Knight archetypes. Gives you some characters and some, um, I guess, spells. Some items, items and things that they can have. So if you're looking to build up characters for your Pathfinder 2.0 world, this is, uh, I don't know if this is out yet. Paizo is really pretty good about sending things early to us, and I don't have their information sheet anymore for this piece. So, Lost Omens Character Guide. There you go. 
go check it out. Uh, arrived just a few minutes ago when I went to go check out the mail is uh, Angel Volume 1. See, it says not for resale right there on that. That's how you know it's a review copy. This is Volume 1 of the Angel series, which I've been okay with. I have not read it as much as I've read the Buffy the Vampire Slayer series because I really love Boom Studios' um, relaunch, reimagining of the Buffy universe. So I have read little bits and pieces of the Angel series. Now the Hellmouth event is going on right now, and I've liked that quite a bit. Let's see, here's the uh, information sheet. I was looking for this. Uh, Angel Volume 1, as a hardcover, arrives October 23rd, where it's in bookstores now. So both of these are out now. Both the uh, 20th anniversary hardcover as well as the soft cover are in bookstores right now. So they sent this to us a little bit late, but that's okay. Might, might have to do a giveaway sometime. Here's something that arrived this week uh, for a book that is in stores this week. No, that's in stores next week that I thought was fantastic. Now, there is a kids series called Boulevard where this dinosaur lives in New York and he explores New York. This is what arrived this week. I'm opening it up. And I'm like, oh, look, it's the newest Boulevard book. And my wife says, looks like a pizza box. And that's because the new Boulevard book is called Boulevard Eats New York. And so you open this thing up, and sure enough, if you're someone that likes to picnic, they threw in a little uh, Boom Studios plastic uh, plasticware set. So you've got a, a knife, a spoon, and a fork. It all collapses together into this handy little handle form and slide it together. It's got Boulevard on one side, Boom Studios on the other. That's kind of really cute. And then, of course, they included the, the hardback book. And if you are not familiar with Boulevard, I really, when, the, when it, the first book came out, I really enjoyed the heck out of just reading it with my youngest son. Uh, this is a kind of a picture book. This is from Archaea's, the imprint from Archaea. But it's a, it's a cute little story that I would highly recommend people check out. Talks a little bit about the different places that you would find and eat in uh, in New York City. It's called the Discovery Adventure. Moe's Holla Truck. Uh, let's see, there is a Fish and Daughters Appetizers. Lower East Side Manhattan. I, I have no idea if these are, well, I think these are real places because they got Famous Joe's Original New York Pizza in here. So I... I really like this. So Boulevard Eats New York, a discovery adventure. Uh, this one is, I think it is out next week. Yeah, November. In bookstores and your comic book stores. The cover price on this is a pretty good deal. 18 bucks, 19 bucks. Oh, I'm sorry, that's Canadian. All our Canadian friends, you're gonna pay 18, what is it? Uh, what's, a, what's a dollar called in, is it a crooner? No, that's uh, Denmark, right? 18 Canadian dollars, $15 US. Uh, this, I would say, age group is probably... Oh, I want to say that this is probably um, probably ages 6 and up. I think 14-year-olds probably would not get a big kick out of this book. But I remember reading the original Boulevard story with my son, the 8-year-old, who was um, 5 or 6 at the time, and he enjoyed it. Uh, but it's one that you want to read together. Uh, this one with all the words, it's introducing new words and new ideas. This one might be something that is uh, geared towards second, third graders. So Boulevard Eat, Eats New York, I think this might be a good gift. Now, granted, when you go and buy the book, all you're getting is the book. If you want the pizza box and the, uh, the plastic utensils, then you need to be on Boom Studios' uh, nice list. So those are a couple of the books that arrived this week. I think within the last week and a half, because I think the Pathfinder book has been around for maybe two weeks. So there you go on that. For certainly that did arrive this week, and I'm very excited about this, um, I am a huge fan of the Batman Beyond animated series that ran years ago. I remember watching it when I was living in California. Um, out, I, is it out now? Is it out this week? I forget when this is. It is the six disc Blu-ray collector's set that has the complete Batman Beyond series. Now it doesn't include, let's see, does it include the movies? Yes, it does include Batman Beyond Return of the Joker, 
the original uncut version, so you get to see the horrific transformation of the uh, surprise bit, which I shouldn't reveal if nobody has ever seen that. Uh, then it celebrates 80 years of the Dark Knight. They also have a nostalgia thing. Oh, I was hoping that it would have... Wasn't there a second Batman Beyond movie? I was hoping it had in there, but it has all 52 episodes. Plus, there are some other things that go in it. Now, this collector set is limited. It's a limited edition set. It's limited to 50,000 copies. It does come with some art cards, some art that's in here. Here's a little, I haven't taken it out, because, you know, this is a collector's thing. I want to save this so that in 50 years I can sell this for, uh, for millions of dollars, right? It's got a nice boxed, um... You guys didn't know you were getting an unboxing today. Oh, this is nice. Uh, it's got a nice, uh, fold-out with the, the discs, if you're a Blu-ray person. It's got your little, oh, it's got digital copies. I'm not gonna show the, uh, code, but it does have a digital copy so you can download stuff. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Pleasant Doom, for following us. So, you've got all of these things in here. I think I've already got the, um... I don't have the 4K version that I've downloaded, but I do have the complete Batman animated series that I've purchased off of iTunes, so there's that. And then what I haven't pulled out yet, I thought there was another art thing in here, but you get your own own little uh, mini pop of the, uh, of Terry, what is his name, Terry McGinnis? Yeah, Terry McGinnis. Little Batman in there. Comes in a little uh, box, that's kind of neat, limited edition exclusive stuff right there. So now i got to pack all this stuff back up, because again, limited edition. But yeah, there's only 50,000 of these, which a lot of reviewers got these. A lot of press people got these. Ah! Well, not so good condition now. <laughs> oh yeah, Kevin Eleven is doing a great job there. If you are going to pick up any of this stuff, use that link. Use that Amazon link over at uh, Majorspoilers.com. And uh, it's not going to cost you anything extra, but a little bit does come back our way, and it does help this channel and everything that we do at Major Spoilers. And i, I got to be honest with you, uh, we are going to have to do a fundraising drive and try to get some more patrons between now and the end of the year, because California has changed some of its freelancer laws. And if I want to keep some of the contributors at Major Spoilers contributing, um, I have to hire them as full-time employees, which means the, it's going to change our tax, the way we do taxes. Which means that in order to cover that, uh, we need some more money coming in to cover uh, cover those taxes. So uh, if you haven't, use that Amazon link. Also, if you're not a patron at patreon.com slash major spoilers, uh, $5 a month. If you can afford $5 a month, and really if you're going out and buying a pizza every week, I, you might be able to afford $5 a month. But uh, if you can help us out, it's right there. Patreon.com slash major spoilers subscribe to this channel, become, you know, all the stuff that Kevin is po posting up. Yeah, the art cards look really good on this. But uh, we need to basically raise another two to $5,000 between now and March in order to keep some of our contributors around. Otherwise, they're gone. Uh, we won't be able to hire them for, you know, eight months. We'll only be hire able to hire them two months out of the year just because of that. Um... Yeah, 50,000, that's barely one for every spoiler right. I think yeah, that's probably more like five for every spoiler right, uh, just with Critical Hit alone. And again, if you're following us from one of our other podcasts, we do so many podcasts. Critical Hit, probably one of our most popular. Uh, what do we got? 10 to 20,000 downloads a month just off each episode, so that's a good deal. Um, we've also got the Major Spoilers podcast, top five, so many more that you might want to check out. Yeah, there you go. Resub. It is the first of the month. Every little bit helps. Here's the thing that I ordered. Now, this is, you know, these other things have been sent to me to talk about on, you know, the Finally Friday or talk about the website or talk about on some of the other shows. I like showing these off here. It gives you guys a chance to see what's going on. But the thing I am most excited about arrived yesterday. Yesterday? Yeah, I think it was yesterday. I have been waiting for this since it was announced from Fantasy Flight Games. What was it back in June, July? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, Marvel Champions. It is so cool. Um, let's see. Is that because they only produce content for you? I don't understand that question. No, they've uh, California changed its 
tax laws regarding freelancers, especially for journalists. Basically saying that if you have someone having more than 35 bylines in a year, um, you can't hire them as freelancers anymore. You have to hire them as a full-time employee. And so that changes the tax law, moving from a 1099 in which the employee is responsible for all their taxes to the employer uh, withdrawing the taxes, also contributing to things that, you know, everybody hates having taken out of their paycheck, but has to be the employee contributor part of that. Um, and so we don't we don't have the money to to do that part of it. So, um, yeah, that's that's that has that is what has changed in that freelancer law with the taxes. Now, they specifically said that, hey, you can have a doctor that's a freelancer. You don't have to worry about that. The, the law that they were doing came from a very noble place. And I don't disagree that if I can hire people as, as full-time people, that I would hire them as full-time people. But um, the problem comes that this law was specifically targeted at companies who can afford it, but were making profits off of people. Uh, it was targeted to Lyft and Uber and DoorDash. That's specifically who this law was targeted at. And they made exceptions for some doctors and lawyers and such until they realized, oh, what about journalists? And they said, well, uh, journalists can write 35 uh, byline credited articles. And after that, you have to hire them as full time employees without realizing that it really kills the journalism industry, both in California and anyone who is hiring freelance journalists. We're not really journalists, but anybody who is writing uh, freelance anywhere else in the country. So yeah, it's it's really bad. And after the law was passed, I think the state legislature, my understanding from one, a couple of the people who were talking to me on Twitter this past week, is the state legislature has realized their mistake and are trying to figure out a way to give exemptions to freelance journalists so that they to aren't totally screwed. Because here's what's going to happen. There are going to be companies who cannot afford to pay those taxes or pay the full-time benefits to freelancers. And so they're just going to let them go. They're not going to hire them beyond their 35 posts or their 35 submissions or whatever that may be. And after those 35 are gone, those people aren't employed. They're going to have to go find work somewhere else. They're going to have to go find other freelance work somewhere else. And so there's no guarantee that they were going to have, have that work ready after that 35. So yes, you can be a regular contributing freelancer and know that you're going to have a paycheck month to month. But now under this law, if the company doesn't hire you or can't hire you, as a full-time employee, you're going to be unemployed. Or in, in our case, where I want to hire everybody as a full-time employee, we're going to be out of money and we're going to be out of business in two months uh, anyway. So damned if you do, damned if you don't, when you're a tiny small business like Majorspoilers.com trying to make a living in the big bad world. But there you go. But Lyft and Uber and uh, DoorDash, all those people will be just fine. So that's why we're trying to raise some additional money so we can cover, offset the cost of what those tax tax obligations by the employer would be. So again, patreon.com slash major spoilers. All right, back to this box. Marvel Champions, here's the learn to play. I've got to go through this even though I've watched, whoops, sorry, I've watched a number of, uh, of the how to plays on that. Rules reference guide, Brad Will will be most uh, interested in that. A bunch of punchy out things. So look like dials and then a bunch of uh, little chiclets, pointers, counters, those kinds of things. That'll be good, too. And then I know the box looks really empty right now. This is your starter set. This is for four players to play. And so you get in this. You get some some characters to play like Spider-Man, like um, uh, She-Hulk, like who are the other ones in, that are in here? Uh, Black Panther. Um, like Captain Marvel. They're all in here. It's hard to see if you can see that art with the, the stuff. Uh, let's see. Is it uh, Black Panther, Spider-Man, Captain Marvel, She-Hulk? I think that's it in the starter set. I think it's just those four characters to begin with. And then, because this is Fantasy Flight, they will be releasing on a regular basis new heroes to play, new cards to play with those heroes, new villains, new schemes. So that is all coming. In fact, uh, coming out, I think, next week will be the first expansion for this. The Captain America, I believe, is the first expansion. And then the next villain scheme release will be um, Green Goblin. So Green Goblin will be a player character in this. So all this empty space, yeah, it's going to get filled up pretty quickly 
uh, with this game because I'm going to be buying all of it. This looks like Sentinels of the Multiverse meets um, uh, the Hobbit, not the Hobbit, um, but basically meets um, Sentinels of the Multiverse meets one of those other games that uh, Fantasy Flight does really well with their card shuffling and their deck buildings and all that stuff. So I am super, super, super excited about playing Marvel Champions. And we're going to get back to that on Munchkin Land here fairly soon, which is great too because now that soccer is over, I talked about this last week, uh, I was finally able to make a dent in moving the Nerd Room of Doom and putting it back together. And I got about half of the, the basement area that has been cluttered with comic books and um, toys and statues, Lego sets. All that stuff is being put back. And I moved about a ton. 4,000 pounds? I don't know. What is a ton? I, 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 I lifted 49 long boxes full of comics multiple times on Saturday last week. Got them all put back together. That was great to put that back. I, again, I lost an entire row of uh, long boxes during the, the damage, the water damage that we had. Comics were all safe. They all got put into some short boxes. But as I was putting things back together, I said, you know what? I'm going to sit down and I am going to go through these uh, boxes and I'm going to start culling this because I would like to, instead of getting um, um, 10 rows of now five long boxes on each row, or I'm sorry, five rows of 10 long boxes. Uh, what I would like to do is get three rows of 10. So that means I've got to get about a row of 15, 15 long boxes, 20 long boxes out of the house. And so I started going through the collections and just very quickly going, hey, I don't need the 10th. I'm going to set that aside. Oh, I don't care about uh, the Dark Knight Returns 3, uh, uh, whatever it is, the uh, the, the ra ra reign of the Superman. I don't care about that. Let's put this aside. Oh, here are all these comics that I'm not going to read. Let's put this aside. And when I finished the top row of boxes, I think I may have still one more long box to go through. I already had two and a half long boxes of comics to give away. And that made me very excited because... I've already got whatever joy I've gotten out of these comics. And so now I can either sell them or I can give them away. And today, it's funny that we, we mentioned giving away comics because launching today is the Jawan Comic Drive for Soldiers. This is the fifth annual Comic Drive for Soldiers. And I think this is a worthy cause. If you are someone that has a bunch of... Oh, okay, so uh, 4,000 pounds. Uh, how long is a long box? A uh, long box is about 350 comics, 250 comics, depending. It takes about 60 pounds per box times 49 boxes. Uh, but I'm going to be donating two and a half long boxes of comics to the Jawan Comic Drive for Soldiers in its fifth year. I'm going to pack these up. I'm going to ship them out. And then these comics are going to be turned around and sent to soldiers overseas and their families to keep them entertained when they are deployed overseas. And I think this is a, a great deal, and I think it's a, if you've got some extra comics lying around, you can find out more at Majorspoilers.com. Also, you can find out more at the official um, uh, website, which is, let me find out what the official website is really quick. Uh, oh, Jawan Comic Drive, it is. Oh, I don't see the official website here. Here it is. No. I don't know where it's at. J just look for comic, oh, here it is. Comic Drive for Service Members dot com. Comic Drive for Service Members dot com. Let me put this back up again for you. Comic Drive for Service Members dot com. Fill out the forms, get everything sent in, and you can help out and make some people's lives maybe less miserable. But now, because the Nerd Room of Doom is being put back together. Tomorrow, I have to build some more shelves. I'm going to build some shelving so that we have things off the floor. That was the problem before. Everything was just scattered all over the floor, stacked in piles. All the trade paperbacks will be off the floor. All the statues and it will be off the floor. The toy room has been, to the uh, toy closet has been totally um, removed so that uh, everything is in plastic bins instead of the cardboard that they were in before. And once that room is clean, we will have the basement back, the, the shooting area back, and we can start shooting Munchkin Land again. And I'm excited for this because that means that probably right around the 1st of December, we can start shooting production again. Maybe a little bit earlier, it just depends. But we're going to finish up the uh, Fantasy Flight um, Lovecraft, the uh, Call of Cthulhu uh, card game. And then we're going to start getting into Marvel Champions. We're going to get into 
the Hellboy game. We're going to get into so much more. I cannot wait to get those videos back up on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash major spoilers. So there you go. And uh, there you go, dear listener and dear viewers and everybody who's watching on the replay. Hey, listen, if you're watching this on the replay, either here on Twitch or over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash major spoilers, I would encourage you to get in on the action. I know I've been running my mouth a lot and not paying attention to the uh, to the chat today. But there are a lot of, of cool people hanging out here in the chat today. We do this live 4 o'clock p.m. Central Time every Friday, providing there aren't any other hassles or headaches that are going on. And it's a chance for us to talk about what's going on in the world, what's going on in the comic industry, what's going on when we bring in special guests. I think I need to get Dr. Brad back on here. We need to get uh, Ashley back on here again. And we can just talk about what's going on in the industry and have a lot of fun and chat with you guys. Also, Saturdays, we do a game stream, or I do a game stream. This week, instead of 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I think it's going to be about 7 or 8 o'clock p.m. Central Time. It's going to be right here, back here on this Twitch channel. So again, if you subscribe and you have the notifications turned on, you'll get a little notification when I go live. That will happen uh, later tomorrow, because again, I have to build these shelves and get uh, stuff put away. It's all so that we can grow major spoilers and make more content and more stuff for you. And I thank all of you for hanging out in the room this week. Yeah, Marvel Champions looks really cool. Let me just scroll through here really quick. Um, yeah, people are saying, okay, yeah, tax change makes sense. Marvel Champions is something that I've wanted to pick up. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. I agree it was. it's designed to enhance full-time employment, but that was never going to happen in real life. Yeah, uh, that's true. Um, I was looking it up due to being a freelancer in California. Uber and Lyft uh, mentioned that they have no intention of hiring people beyond the contractor stage. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, but interesting, uh, and I've been talking with my accountant, and I'll bring up, I'll talk a lot more in depth in a couple of weeks with the VIP live chat for those of you that are uh, Patreon members at the gold level and higher. Every week, I, uh, or every month, I sit down and tell you what's going on behind the scenes at Major Spoilers, and I'll go more into depth with this. But I have been talking to my accountant, and basically, he says, uh, from the law standpoint, uh, there's no difference between uh, freelancer and contractor in the way that you're using them. So, uh, Major Spoilers is kind of screwed either way on that. So. There we go. Uh, all right. Totally need to uh, get Dr. Brad back here on, on the show. It's been a while. Yes. Agreed, 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 agreed. All right. I hope that was interesting for you. I said we had a lot to unbox this this uh, this week. So hopefully that was good. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully you enjoyed the conversation. Hopefully you got a little peek behind the curtain of what goes on at Major Spoilers and why am I late night uh, freaking out on whatever night it was. Wednesday night might put things in a little perspective. Wednesday was just a terrible day for me in so many different ways. Maybe we'll talk about that next week. But until then, we're out of time. The kids have been off school, out of school now for two days, and one of them was screaming about sushi, so I guess I have to go take them and get some sushi. Otherwise, apparently, I will be a horrible parent, and they will write about me in their memoirs decades from now. So you guys have a great week. You have a great weekend. Uh, be nice to one another, be kind to one another, do good, be good, and we will talk with everyone tomorrow, I guess, for the uh, for the game stream, probably around 8 o'clock, 7 to 8 o'clock p.m. Central Time. Uh, be on the lookout for that. I don't know what we're going to play this week, but we'll play something. Take care, everybody. Have fun. Oh, yeah, we got to do these credits. Look at all these awesome peoples. All these producers, associate producers. Another perk when you become a patron. Rusty. Allison and Bill. I want, I want to open this Marvel Champions thing and start playing it. I was hoping I had time to get the kids to play, but they may be too. Oh, I don't want to play, Dad. Your games are dumb. We want to play Pokemons. That's how kids are, right? They don't want to play anything that you're interested in. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Uh, Kevin says, head over to the Discord. What are you waiting for? Get over there to our Discord channel. Kevin, how about you pop, pop a link up if you got it? Hey, Vince. Thanks for showing up. Pleasant doom. It's kind of the way I feel lately. I'm sitting here pleasantly doomed. There's Davids. There's all the Davids that help out. You get your names right here in lights. Not really lights. Uh, well, I guess, depending on if you have a projection TV, maybe it's lights. Otherwise, it's LEDs. I guess that's projected light as well. Get your name in lights is the bottom line. See your name scroll by very fast. You can, you can hit the pause button if you like. 
you can hit that pause button and uh, say, hey, look, there's my name, Ma. Hey, Ma. Hey, Dad. There's my name. You can be famous like Linda or Mario or Mark or Martha. I think there's enough Marthas that are already famous. Look at all the Michaels and the Michaelas and the Nicks and the Noahs and the Pauls and the Peters and the Rachels. I think there's only one Rachel, though. Oh, the sanguiline po uh, sock puppet that lives in your drawer or whatever. His name always flies by. You know, no. J. Michael T., you enjoy your weekend. <laughs>